All right, well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here at Genetry Solar. It is Sunday. I should be working on other projects, but unfortunately, this whole studio thing has been consuming me to the point where I've been doing a whole bunch of research. I thought I knew a lot about my camera. Turns out uh, I knew very little. I was really good at the photography por uh, portion of it, as far as video, that's completely different, but I think I figured out a lot of the settings. Trying a new look here. Hopefully this works. Probably some new lights. I've got some fill lights here so you can see the background a little bit better. And now you shouldn't see any focus hunting or exposure compensation. It should be pretty solid. So let's hope that I'm standing in the right spot where I marked my X and I'm not way out of focus. So anyways... Um, if it is, I apologize, but, uh, anyway, so let's talk about, again, as the topic has been for the past couple of videos, the 12K, and, uh, I figured I'd do an interesting, um, uh, response, and to a comment yesterday about why we can't just drop ship our inverters from Shenzhen straight to our customers, and it's actually a question that has come up you know, every so often, not a lot, but every so often. But I think with the amount of money that we're talking about here with these bigger units, uh, it's more important that, uh, that our customers understand why exactly we cannot direct ship from China to, uh, to your location, wherever you're at. So when we design these things, we, from the very, very beginning, we looked at a strong possibility that a Chinese company or some other company overseas would quite literally copy our design and then sell it for cheaper by mass producing it, right? I mean, you look at anything out there in the world, and I mean anything that has been proven to work in any way, shape, or form, there's usually what's called a Chinese knockoff version of it, basically. It is the lower cost, cut corners version of the exact same product. And we were concerned about that problem at the very beginning, not just from a uh, aesthetics point of view, like maybe the look of our case or style or design or, or whatever, uh, but also internally, as far as our boards are concerned, the components that we use, things like that. That was a big concern for us. And you might be saying, well, why not you just get a patent on it? Well, patents don't really matter to those who just want to sell knockoffs. It doesn't really matter. It's very, very difficult to basically impossible to go after a Chinese company because they ripped off your design. I mean, how? Um, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that you can cite some very specific few cases where this has actually happened, but come on, we're an inverter company. We're not a multi-billion dollar company that can make agreements back and forth to whatever. Okay, the point is, Yes, it's not absolutely impossible, but it's 99.99% difficult, okay? So, anyways, with that in mind, what we did was we came up with a way to secure our product from being copied as much as possible. There's no way, there's no way that we can 100%, you know, block our our design and software and etc. 100% so that it can never be copied that's just it's just not possible so uh, we we did everything that we could to mitigate this and one of the things that we do is the inverter is not completed when it ships to me it's not complete it's not functioning it requires software and it requires hardware and it requires um, specific installation of parts in the inverters which are not carried at the factory, okay? Now, of course, you could still argue that, well, they can just acquire those parts and do it themselves. Yes, that's true. Um, but our design is specifically designed in a way that all the parts work together 
in a very specific fashion. And it would take a lot of reverse engineering to figure out how all of that worked. And Sid can give you all the details and so on, but mainly our code is what defines us and our uniqueness. Another inverter company could certainly come out with a inverter that looks the same, sounds the same, has a similar GUI, you know, set up and all that other stuff, but they're never going to have those thousands of hours of code that we've put into these things. They can come up with something different, obviously, but it's never going to be genuine. It's never going to be the same. And they can sell them for two or three or four hundred dollars less, but as I have said from the beginning, and as a lot of people say from the beginning of time, you get what you pay for. So with that in mind, um, we're less worried about it right now. Maybe in the future when our business really takes off and we start selling a lot of these units, another company will take notice and want a slice of that pie. That's just the way it is with everything. It doesn't matter what it is um, from, from Hollywood uh, to crayons. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. If somebody is making a lot of money at something, then a lot of people want to join in to get a slice of that pie. So it's inevitable that we're going to have some direct competition. That is, we'll have knockoff inverters that will look the same as ours, but you're never going to find the quality. So we are paying discounted prices on many of our components because we're able to funnel them through PowerJack. PowerJack's a pretty large company. They have access, direct access. Quite literally, they just walk across the street and get these components. So they can get them super cheap. We have volume cheapness here and a lot of our components. Now, that's not to say that our components themselves are cheap, but we're getting them for an extremely low price compared to, let's say, that we were just starting out, we didn't have any factory, we didn't have any nothing. If we went to the same company and said, we need this built, they would likely charge us a lot more. But we have the blessing of having PowerJack's massive connections and mass quantity purchasing to get deals on these components. And with that in mind, it's still very expensive. I mean, Sid can go on all the details as far as if he wants to on just the cost of the relays themselves. You will never see a company like PowerJack or even the bigger guys take these expensive relays and put them in their in their actual inverters because they can't get them likely for, I don't know, maybe 2 or 3% cheaper than what we're paying for them. So it's not like they can say, okay, you're paying $50 a relay, we'll just buy 20,000 of them and we'll only pay $10 a relay. It doesn't work that way because we're already getting those discounts, those quantity discounts. We're already getting that on the parts. If we were to start with this inverter absolutely fresh with absolutely no support from any company out there and we were to say we want to put together this inverter, they would likely probably charge us twice what we're actually charging right now or being charged right now because we don't you know we wouldn't have access to all these great sources of parts so when we put these things together yes we put them together for um, as cheap as we can and I don't mean like Walmart cheap I'm talking about as low cost as we can and that is really at the bottom where they can't get them any cheaper. They really can't. They can't get relays any cheaper. They can't get components any cheaper. We're already getting the cheapest price that these bigger companies are getting. So with that in mind, again, uh, it is unlikely that you'll even, it wouldn't be financially feasible to any of these knockoff companies to charge two or $300 less because they're likely not making any money because we're already getting such a good deal on these parts because of our connections that if they decided to make a knockoff Genetry Solar Inverter, if they're charging two or $300 less, you're losing out on something, and probably a lot. Either the quality of the transformer core, the thickness of the windings, uh, the components that were actually used in, let's say, the main board or the caps or whatever. 
because we're already getting them for as low of a price as you could possibly get. So it is very difficult for a knockoff company. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very difficult in this particular this this particular industry for a knockoff company to come around and say we can charge less because while they could possibly do it let's say a hundred dollars less the reputation would just absolutely i mean you, you just wouldn't be able to sell it as a genetry solar authentic inverter for a hundred dollars less i don't think anyone's gonna buy it i mean yes there's gonna be some people who are gonna buy stuff like that but when you're looking at something, you're already paying $1,100. If you want to save $100 to go with the knockoff brand, I, I don't think so. Not with something that's this important, that's this vital to survival, to your household, to things like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's very unlikely. If it's a hot glue gun, fine. But when it's something like this that's powering your entire house, saving an extra $100 is, in my opinion pretty pointless to buy the knockoff versus us and if you buy the knockoff you're not going to be able to just call somebody up and say hey i'm having a problem with this because there's going to be nobody there to help you there will be possibly an email address you can send email to but you're not going to get that kind of support that you do with us with the authentic so off on a tangent a little bit yes but um the point is is that uh going all the way back to the beginning of this video how we're protecting our stuff and another way to do that is that we do the final assembly here i actually do the final assembly so i get an inverter it hasn't had its transformer wired it hasn't had its thermistors installed it has not had its lcd screen installed it has not been programmed it has not been tested and we get this fresh unit onto the bench i call it the bench but we get it onto the bench and i will go through all the steps depending on the unit depending on what i need to set you know for example if it's a 24 volt inverter it takes a little longer to set the transformer as well as i have to swap out the fans for 24 volt fans so you know there's little things here and there that can add a little bit of time but um typically i usually spend between two and three hours on each and every inverter because I don't rush it, okay? I don't just as fast as I can put the lid on and get it out because if there's a problem with it and it's my fault because I rushed it, because I overlooked something, because I dropped a tool inside there, whatever, then that's just more downtime, that's more cost, etc. So I take my time with each and every one of these things. I look at it. When I'm done, when the, when the inverter's running, I immediately get my laser thermometer out as well as my um, thermal camera and I shoot the various parts of the inverter looking for problems. If suddenly the transformer just jumps by 50 degrees when at idle, something's probably wrong. And these are things that I look at. I don't just fire it up, say, well, it's working slap a lid on out it goes i spend some time working on these things and testing them i look at the sine wave i've got my oscilloscope i check the sine wave i have had instances before where i've powered a unit up the sine wave looks great at idle doing nothing i plug in a light bulb and suddenly there's like jagged edges all over it could be a loose connection it could be something else like that the point is is that i go through a series of tests with these inverters before I call them good, because it's super important for us to be able to get it right and not have something return. We can't help things like shipping damage, but we can certainly help quality control here. So that's why it takes longer. And yes, that is also a problem as far as speed goes. If we get big enough, you know, where I can hire somebody, of course I'm gonna hire somebody to help me manufacture these inverters or assemble the final assembly that is not manufacture. Um, but right now it's just me and this is what I do and I got a wall of inverters here that I work on I mean, that's just the way that it is. So um, That final assembly helps us protect our product the code that was all handwritten from scratch by Sid is all locked into That unit it's all right there And again Sid will have to go through all the details as far as how he does that how he's able to protect our code uh, he can do that, but um, it's uh, it's safer this way 
yes, it does cost you, unfortunately, a little bit more money because we can't direct ship straight to you. And I understand that is a that is a downside, unfortunately. But in order for us to have better quality control, because we can't ask the factory to manufacture a whole unit and do the test that we do, it would take them way too long. They would be way too impatient. They wouldn't want to. They want to build these things as fast as they can and get them out the door. They're a mass production. Whereas we can take our time and do quality control on each and every one of these and make sure that it works. And yes, unfortunately, that does mean that it's going to cost more money. But when you're talking about 60 or 80 or 100 or 500 units in a container or something like that, the cost per unit to ship to me versus direct ship to you, you're not saving a whole lot when you look at the overall cost of the actual unit. It's not really saving you that much money. So I like to look at it as just an insurance policy to make sure that the unit is working as good as it possibly can. It goes through me before it goes out. And if I get a complaint or it has to come back, that hurts. It hurts a lot because it, it kills any money that we would have made on that unit. So, uh, you know, that's just the way that it is. So, yes, that is why we cannot drop ship. Long video to explain that, but that's why we can't just ship direct to our customers. Um, I might start offering, again, the, the, air, the airship priority shipping um, because, it, you know, we're about 40 to 50 days from the time that we order to the time we actually get them. Uh, you know, airlifting for the big ones, it's going to be expensive. It was, uh, it was well over $500 to airlift this one unit to us that we're getting here next week. Uh, that's always an option if you need it fast. If you need it real fast, they'll airlift it to me and then I'll be able to get it out faster. So that's, you know, that'll save you at least a month to a month and a half of waiting for the unit. So I might temporarily bring somebody in to help me manu or to, to final assemble these because there's no doubt going to be a backlog and I don't want people to wait any, any longer than they have to. But anyway, we'll obviously deal with that at a later date. So anyway, thanks again for all of your support. Hopefully this answers your question as far as why we can't ship direct from Shenzhen, at least for now we have to do this, this final assembly. And, um, you know, until we can find a way to do it and protect our, uh, our, our inverters from, you know, being stolen, basically, this is what we're going to do. So thanks again for all of your support as always, and take care.